Kingdom Hearts 2 has some great bosses. From Shan Yu to all the data bosses, most of them have one thing in common. They don't let you just wail on them forever until they're dead. Some of them teleport. Some of them retaliate. Some of them teleport and then retaliate. Whether you've noticed or not, this to an extent forces you to come up with a strategy aside from just do damage, especially in higher difficulties, where tanking hits and relying on cure becomes less and less sustainable. The reason this happens is because of revenge value, a hidden value that stops the player from infinitely comboing a boss to death, not unlike the infinite prevention system in Skullgirls. Almost every boss that staggers uses this system, and learning how it works can mean the difference between this and this. Let's start out with what exactly Revenge Value is and its mechanics. Take a look at this gauge. As Sora attacks the boss, the gauge will fill. Different attacks fill it a different amount. This is an Attacks Revenge Value, or RV. For example, Thunder adds 4 RV, while Aerial Sweep adds 2.5 RV. The amount the gauge is filled at any time is the boss's current revenge value. For example, at the beginning of a fight, every boss's current RV is zero, until you hit them, at which point the bar will fill by the amount dictated by the attack's RV. After this combo, the current RV is 5, and after a second one, it's 10. And finally, the amount that needs to be filled for the boss to break out of the combo is the maximum revenge value, or RV max. Once the current RV meets or exceeds the RV max, the boss will do what is called a forced revenge, which as we've seen are moves that can range from getting away from your combo to punishing you with a retaliation. If you let a boss recover without hitting their RV max, they will do what is called a normal revenge, which is generally a much wider range of attacks. When someone mentions revenge value, they may be talking about any of these three contexts, or the entire mechanic as a whole. Keep that in mind if you decide to read or watch more about it. Alright, now that you know the basics, let's see how it works in an actual fight. First, we'll start out with a standard boss like Axel. Axel here has an RV max of 12.5, as do many other bosses. At the beginning of the battle, Axel's current RV is 0. A normal air hit deals 1.5 RV, and an aerial finisher does 3.5 RV. So this combo will raise Axel's current RV to 6.5. After starting another combo, his current RV increases to 8, then 9.5, then 13. Since 13 exceeds 12.5, Axel's now primed to do his forced revenge, which in this fight is this attack. Because we know he'll retaliate with that attack, on the last finisher of the second air combo, we can guard once we hit the ground and Axel starts his attack. While he does the attack, his current RV drains back to zero, after which the situation is reset and Axel will start his normal attacks again. Next up is a boss that plagues lots of players, Demix, and we're going to have a look as to why he does. Just like Axel, Demix has an RV max of 12.5. Ground hits deal 1 RV, and ground finishers deal 3 RV. In this situation, I have a single combo plus ability active, so my ground combos are extended by one before I get to the finisher. That means this combo that ends in a finishing leap deals 6 RV. Afterwards, I hit a full air combo, which by the end gets his current RV just to meet his RV max, and he does his force for bit. Whoops. As you can see, getting a boss to do their forced revenge isn't always the best choice. Sometimes the safer choice is to back off, even if it does make the boss less predictable. And for the final bit, we'll get into what is likely the most well-known application of revenge value, looping. You might have heard about the negative combo loop, where you equip Fenrir and negative combo on Sora, as well as disabling any air combo pluses and aerial finishers. This makes Sora do this overhead finisher, and doing it over and over can result in a combo that the enemy can never escape from. This works on a surprising amount of bosses, but there is one thing I would like to clear up before I get into the explanation of looping. This is not what I mean when I say looping. I've heard several people say this works because Fenrir and negative combo make you deal no RV to a boss, which is completely untrue, since if you stop attacking they will retaliate, often for a very long time as their RV is draining to zero since it doesn't happen immediately. 
The reason it works is because certain attacks will prevent a boss from performing their Force Revenge immediately, and instead they'll wait until they stop staggering, sometimes performing a different attack than their more common Force Revenge. <sighs> Sorry, just had to get that off my chest. Certain bosses have Forced Revenge attacks that can give you an advantage if you avoid them in certain ways, and those can lead into more damage. That leads into their Forced Revenge again, which leads into more damage, which leads into their Forced Revenge. You get the picture. Some looping methods are simpler than others, and it really depends on what tools you have at your disposal, as well as what the boss's Forced Revenge is. I've had two loops going on in the background here, and they both use the boss's Forced Revenge as an initiator for more damage. I've already explained this one in one of my previous videos, so I'll explain this one instead. Lingering Will has an RV max of 25, which is the highest in the game. I'm going to reach this pretty easily by doing three full combos which consist of four normal hits and one explosion. Explosion does 6 RV, so by the end of the final combo, his current RV jumps from 24 up to 30, starting his Forced Revenge. His Forced Revenge usually consists of three sweeps into a wide range whip attack, or sometimes the other way around. And each of these are pretty easily avoidable once you get the timing down. Not only are they avoidable, but more importantly, they're punishable. So, because I can punish his Forced Revenge, I do another full combo, getting his current RV back up past his RV max, he does his Forced Revenge, and I punish it. I can continue this throughout the whole fight until he gets around here on his HP bar, which starts his DM phase, and that changes his Forced Revenge by adding him teleporting away and starting a different attack afterwards. This is important to know, because many other bosses do this as well. Their Forced Revenge can change based on what phase they're in, and actually, their Normal Revenge can change as well. In Lingering Will's case, during DM phase, if you don't reach the Forced Revenge, and instead let him do his normal revenge, he'll always start his DM, making him predictable and punishable again. So go ahead and experiment with different bosses' revenges, and see which ones you can find punishes for, or which ones make your experiments... experience more fun. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you want to learn more about RV, like specific attack RVs, I've linked the resource that Ahiran documented all his findings on down in the description below. Or you can subscribe and keep a lookout for a future video where I do discuss specific moves and their RVs. Thanks for watching, see y'all around.